طبعا موعدنا الان مع فقره موطن الحلم والانجاز مع هاله ابو علوان وفيها نتعرف على المستثمر ورائد الاعمال السعودي الامريكي ابراهيم الحسيني. اللقاء يلي اجرته زميلي هاله تناول بعض الامثله على مشاريع رياديه اجتماعيه ناجحه اضافه طبعا الى خطط الحسيني لتنفيذ مبادرات ومشاريع استثماريه بدوله الامارات وبمنطقه الشرق الاوسط بتهم تكنولوجيا حمايه البيئه وارصده الكربون. نتابع. بسعدنا أن يكون معنا اليوم المستثمر ورائد الأعمال السعودي الأمريكي السيد إبراهيم الحسيني Good morning, إبراهيم Great to have you here Good morning, صباح الخير صباح النور And welcome to Dubai شكرا It's a pleasure to be here Yeah, pleasure is ours Ibrahim, you're a Saudi national who lived most of, their, of your life in the United States Correct And you're an, like, initially you started your career as a technology entrepreneur Tell us more about you before we dig deeper into the other interesting side, which is the social impact. Um, I went to school in Seattle, and Seattle had a burgeoning technology scene, and I actually started my first business out of my college dorm room at the University of Washington at the age of 19. Impressive. Thank you. And uh, I was just, I was interested in technology, I was interested in entrepreneurism, and I think being Middle Eastern, Um, allows us to think bigger and not think linearly. Uh, I think that's part of our culture, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that upbringing. Absolutely, absolutely. Ben, you have an interesting story from a scuba diver who discovered that the planet really needs help. Correct. And that what shifted your career into social impact causes and everything which helps save the planet. Tell us more about this. Um, so my family... Uh, owns a home on the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So every weekend we'd go and scuba dive in the same spot. And while I did live in the U.S., I'd come back every summer and, of course, visit my family because as Arabs, we are very family-oriented and that's a big sort of source of pride for us. So, And I noticed something over a decade of flying back and forth. Mm -hmm. And what that was was the degradation and the quality of marine life in the spot I was scuba diving in. Yeah. It, that spot went from completely lush and full of life to completely barren and full of plastic in, in a very short period of time. And that made me think, uh, what's the cost of human civilization on the natural world? Because we all live in this closed sphere in the middle of space, and we rely on nature for our survival. We yeah. need oxygen, we need clean water, we need clean food. And if we're polluting the world, then no matter how much money I accumulate, I'm going to be at the effect of this pollution, and so will my family. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And Rahim, so you're mastering social impact businesses. And I think many people ask or have those big questions who don't know about this field like in details. Is it really economically sustainable? I mean, it's, it's not just sustainable. It's one of the most thriving sectors in the global economy. Yes. Because what is, what is climate technology? What is clean technology? It's basically changing the systems that human civilization depends on for uh, its operations. Absolutely. For example, our water systems, food systems, energy systems, transportation systems. These were all developed technologies in the 19th and 20th century yeah. without regard to carbon emissions yes. to pollution. At the time, we thought that the earth was finite and we can never have a, a burdenful relationship to it. And now we yes. know that we can. Absolutely. So climate technology, you know, clean tech, social impact, as you're referring to it, mm -hmm. is the transition from the old polluting technologies to the new, clean, sustainable, cheaper technologies. So mm -hmm. it's more efficient and it's more harmonious with our health and with the natural world. So it's actually the biggest investment opportunity in human history. And what made you choose specifically free market system over philanthropy? What's the reason? Scale. Mm -hmm. The free market system is a $134 trillion a year economy. Mm -hmm. Philanthropy is a small portion of that. Yeah. And whether we like it or not, climate change is probably the biggest existential threat humanity has ever encountered. Since that's the case, we need the biggest system we have, yeah. and that's the free market system. So if we can find vehicles uh, that will allow investors to make equal or better returns, investing in the sustainable future, in a low-carbon future, 
then there's no downside. We get the economic growth that we're looking for as a society, as investors, and we also get a cleaner future for ourselves and our family and a sustainable, harmonious relationship to the natural world at the same time. There's no downside to this. And it's hard for us to think that that's possible, yeah. but technology makes it possible. And that's how you started thinking or you implemented Full Cycle, if you can tell us more about this. So Full Cycle is a growth equity fund that I started in 2013. The idea behind it is to identify what are the most potent climate technologies in the world, yeah. the ones that we have to invest in now, not in the future, and then accelerate their deployment worldwide as fast as possible. Yeah. There is a metric called the gigaton. Mm -hmm. A gigaton is uh, a billion tons of carbon emissions. So the technologies we invest in have to have a minimum abatement capacity of one gigaton or more at full deployment yeah. for us to invest in them. Uh -huh. And that's why we have a very unique thesis to front load the impact of the technologies that we invest in so we can buy ourselves as much time as possible to transition the yeah. rest of our civilization to a clean economy. Impressive. So moving from the thesis of full cycle to Katona, tell us more about that. Um, so in order for the carbon math to pencil out on Earth, we need carbon credits. Yes. The advantage of living in a closed sphere in the middle of space is if you emit carbon here and you draw it down here, it pencils out. Yes. And the most efficient technology in the world for abating CO2 emissions is photosynthesis. Yes. And nature provides photosynthesis. So Katona, yeah. which stands for Capital to Nature, is an enterprise that produces the, uh, the biggest producer of nature-based carbon credits in the world. Mm -hmm. So they develop projects all over Africa, South America, North America, and other places yeah. that, you know, they regrow forests and produce a harmonious relationship with the indigenous people so they can maintain these forests and crops and then issues carbon credits against them and sells them to corporations around, around the world that are interested in neutralizing their yeah. carbon footprint. Amazing. Talking about like regional reach, as you mentioned, yeah. let's move to Middle East. Yes. What brings you here? And uh, what are, are, is there also like anything in general you're planning to do in the UAE specifically? So I just came from Saudi Arabia and it was such a pleasure to see the modernization of that yeah. country and how much they're investing in technology and what leaders they've been in that domain. Yeah. And the UAE has been leading in that domain ev even further back. So yeah. this is an exploratory trip to come and see how we can bring some of these technologies that we've identified in North America and in Europe and yeah. bring them to the Middle East so we can be, you know, so we can be showcases for how quickly we can use our petrodollars to transition to a low carbon future and free up all the oil revenue for export mm -hmm. instead of using it internally. Amazing. And I'm sure UAE is a great like country to explore all of that, especially we just hosted COP28. Correct. And all of this, like all the vision, the strategy is toward that. Brahim Hosseini, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Likewise.